Hello, friends, and welcome back to Cellar Chats. I'm here again. My name is Chris, and we're talking wine. We're hanging out in the cellar at Second Glass. And, I mean, I don't know what else you need to know. Anything? I don't think so. So, this week, we are taking a journey to France, off to the Loire Valley, a place we've visited several times in our wonderful, illustrious string of videos and flights here at the Second Glass. Um, and we're kind of sticking with what I'll call, like, you know, great summer sippers. I know it's a theme you hear all the time. It probably gets old, but you know what? The reality is, is I don't think you can ever have enough suggestions for delicious wines to drink when it's warmer outside with food and with your friends. Again, I know I say that every week, but it's true. I love enjoying wine with people. As much as it seems like I would like to keep it all for myself, it's far more fun to enjoy with others and go out and support small business, which is all the things we want in this life. So without further ado, we're gonna start out with bubbles because obviously this is a little uh, Clos de, Bur Clo de la Bridier, their Cremant de Loire, Brut, what they call their Puret de Silex, little rosé action. And then we're going to roll into Pui Fume, the long overlooked, definitely needs a little more love, Sauvignon Blanc region of the Loire Valley. Pretty much everyone wants to talk about Sancerre, which is excellent, but you know what? For me personally, I have a soft spot for Pui Fume. So we'll get into that. And then a fan favorite. I don't know if it's a fan favorite. House favorite. We'll call it a house favorite. This is... Le Petit Saint Vincent, their Saumur Champagne, 2019, a uh, little 100% little Cabernet Franc. So let's uh, let's jump into it. Let's get some bubbles going. Um, so a little, little information about the winery. This is, like I said, Claude de la Bridier, um, you know, founded by the Garot family. I mean, not, not a super uncommon name. No, uh, no relation to if you're a big fan of, what's that show? His name's Gerald. It's gonna, it's gonna escape me. Now I can't even remember the name of the show. The Witcher, which I enjoy. That's his name. Uh, so this, that's this is their last name, Geralt. Uh, they started making wine in the region in the mid 1800s. Um, you know, pretty common kind of run of the mill storyline. Started in the 1800s, making really great wines. As they've gone through time, they've focused in on more quality. Um, you know, currently it is overseen by. Oh, uh, what is his name? Vincent Geralt. And shortly before his parents retired in 1994, they converted the entire estate to biodynamics, which is even for the Loire Valley, which was really a place is a place known for natural wines and clean farming. That was pretty early on in the game. So kudos to them. So they've been biodynamics since 94. Vincent has continued to push these things. Um, they hold certificate certificates in biodynamics and organics through Demeter. Uh, EcoCert and Biodivin, and they make really lovely sparkling wines. So this one, some really fun grape varieties in here. You know how much I like to have fun grape varieties. So we've got Pinot d'Anis, Pinot Noir, Grulo Gris, Grolo Noir um, is the breakdown. So out of all of those, I imagine only one stood out, Pinot Noir, if, if you heard it in between all those other strange grape varieties. But these are all indigenous grapes to the region, pretty rare, like Grolot Noir, I've not seen very often. Grulo Gris, also another great Friday you don't see very often. More often you see Grulo, um, which would I guess would be called Grulo Noir, just called Grulo, which is a red grape variety known for making delicious rosé. It also makes great reds. Um, and then Pinot d'Anis is a, it's a really fun grape. Uh, for me, it, it's like that classic bistro red wine it's light it's fresh it's a little peppery it's got a little herbaceousness to it good zippy acidity which really lends itself in a sparkling wine so whoo yeah great on the nose i mean the color is just just a hint of like that orangish shit salmon color really pretty kind of like citrus orange marmalade kind of characteristics not like a sweet orange marmalade but the, like tanginess that you get when you open like a jar of marmalade because you know we all have marmalade in our kitchen um mm. yeah mm. great texture 
This wine is um, definitely on like the yeasty bready side of things. The fruits are definitely there, but it's very subdued, like kind of white raspberry, um, a little underripe strawberry characteristics. It's more of a, I get more of like a textural, like kind of chalky, kind of limestone mineral characteristic. You know, it just, again, I always think of imagining you're walking through a gravel parking lot after like a rain on a warm summer day and that kind of like smell and feel in the air of like wet gravel is what I associate with like wet rocks and wine. To me, it gives me the same sensation. Uh, maybe I'm crazy. I'm sure I am. Mm. Wow, that's really lovely. And you know, for, for me, a lot of sparkling rosés tend to really go more towards lots of fruit characteristics and lush, like ripe berries, which I enjoy. But I really like the fact that this wine's a little more subtle. It's a little more elegant and graceful. It's super refreshing. It's not really cold right now, um, but I think if this had maybe about 10 degrees chill on it, it would be spectacular. This is salad wine, sitting on the front porch, enjoying the sunset, you know, just loving life and all the things you need. Or sitting out here on the beautiful patio they have here at Second Glass, having a nice few plates shared with some friends and watching the world go by because, you know, who doesn't want to do that? Again, Clos Clo de la, oh my gosh, I'm struggling with this name. Clo de la Bridier. I'm just going to call it Bridier. Bridier, Cremant de Loire, the Pirate de Silex Brut Rosé. All right, moving in, some Sauvignon Blanc. Let's talk Pouy Fumé. Not to be confused with Pouy Fousse. It is not a Pouy wine. It is a delicious wine. I made that joke. I am a dad. I can make dad jokes. It's okay. All right, so this is uh, Complice de Loire. Um, really, really fun little project here. Kind of a negotiant project started in 2010 um, by Francois Xavier Barque and a friend of his, Saint Nicolas de Bourgay. Wow, is that really his full name? Sorry, I had the information pulled up and it just clicked. That's that's the name. Anyways, so uh, with the vision of just producing really good quality, affordable, well-made wines throughout the Loire Valley. Again, not a story that is new to anybody who's listened to these or been to a wine tasting where they talk about Loire Valley wines or really wines anywhere. It is a common thread in the world these days. A lot of young vignerons, winemakers are really just, you, you, you kind of run into two things. Somebody trying to make the best, most terroir, you know, place specific wine, or somebody who's just trying to make delicious, affordable wines from their home region that really speak of the place, but something you could drink every day. Obviously, there's a lot of things in between, but I think those are two common conversations that you run into when, you know, especially when you're dealing with like wine events or wine tastings, like that's kind of the, the, the common thread. I mean, who wants to bring in a wine and go, oh, this is a, a warehouse where people just, you know, basically buy grapes and they want to make the cheapest plunk possible. No one's going to tell that story. So obviously, when we talk about wines, you're going to hear a lot of the same stories because these are the ones that are important. Anyways, I digress. So Pui Fume, what I like to consider like uh, Sancerre's little overlooked brother is for me, I love these wines. And I think that, you know, in comparison to Sancerre, Pui Fume, I think as a whole, generally speaking, has a little more texture. There's a little more depth of flavor to them. Um, where Sancerre is so mineral and so crisp and so vibrant at least the good ones. Um, and that's really what made it so famous, but you know, really a stone's throw away is Pui Fume, another region of the Loire Valley, focused in on Sauvignon Blanc. Um, I think they have, if I remember correctly, there's a little more clay in the soils here. So it's not pure chalk limestone. They've got a little more heavier soils. So it lends itself to a little more textured Sauvignon Blanc, but you know, for all intents and purposes, it's still Loire Valley Sauvignon Blanc. It has that mineral oyster shell characteristic. Um, and what I really like about it, and you should like about it too, is that Sancerre has become so popular and so expensive that it's hard to find good ones that are affordable. You know, the ones that you find affordable are less exciting. The ones that are really good tend to cost more. Where Pui Fume, 
continues to be overlooked, and there are some serious gems coming out of this region. Um, so again, 100% Sauvignon Blanc on the nose. All those things you want from Loire Valley, Sauvignon Blanc, mineral, citrus, a little salty kind of oyster shell characteristics. Mm. Yeah, bright, fresh. I mean, this is a dead ringer for a go-to entry-level Sancerre that you want to have with dinner and shellfish. You know, I think they probably are doing some mussels still in here. They had some mussels on the menu before. Um, I really should look at the menu more often, but sometimes I just forget to look at it before I start these things. Um, but this is a wine for mussels and oysters. It's so good. And it definitely is showcasing more of that like chalky limestone. Um, there is a little bit of, a little bit of clay here, um, but that you are getting the characteristics that you would expect in the Sancerre. More brightness, more freshness. Again, more of that like oyster shell brininess. So if you are a Sancerre lover, you really need to jump on the board with Pui Fume because the quality is exceptional. The wines tend to be less expensive than Sancerre. They're fairly readily available. And Sancerre is just a little oversaturated. It's also really difficult to get, you know, from a standpoint of someone who sells wine, you know, as for a distributor, Sancerre is so hard to get right now. There just isn't much to be had. But there's some Pui Fume out there and you need to jump on board because this wine is utterly delicious. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Again, that's Complice de Loire, their Terre de Coyotes. So Coyote is kind of a local term for the local soils here, which is a mixture of clay and limestone. 100% Sauvignon Blanc. All right, moving in to the red. Um, I really like Cabernet Franc. I would say that I love Gamay. <laughs> You know, I'm a huge fan of Syrah. I think that between Syrah and Cabernet Franc, those would be like my two go-to like preferred French grapes. I'm not going to say favorite because I don't know if that's accurate. But if I had a choice to drink Cabernet Franc or Syrah, I'd have a hard time deciding depending on the day. Um, they both do similar things for me. They tend to be just as much savory as they are fruity, which I really love that characteristic. They have a lot of flavor a lot of flavor to them, um, but they're not necessarily heavy wines. Great acidity, great freshness. They go incredibly well with food. Um, you know, they, they just do all the things I'm looking for in wine. Nothing against Grenache or Bordeaux or, you know, any of the other incredible, you know, Pinot Noir. I love Burgundy. Pinot is great. I just, it doesn't, you know, I can't afford it, to be honest. So, moving on. So, this is um, Le Petit Saint Vincent. Uh, started, it's currently under the the helm of Dominique Joseph, a fairly young vigneron who is just making serious waves throughout the Loire Valley. You know, he's mentored and is good friends with some of the legends, Terry Germain of Domaine de Roque uh, Nueve and Clos Rougeard, which is arguably the greatest uh, Saumur Champagne producer in all of the Loire Valley. I mean, these wines are legendary. You can't get them. And when you can, they're very expensive. But if you can afford it, jump on it because the wines are great. They age forever. Um, so this is his little like entry level. Uh, it used to be labeled as Pelo, um, which is his kind of his nickname that he's called by his friends throughout the region. Um, but here we just, it's just called Saumur Champagne in the US. I think that the French label has Pello on it, so if you ever see it out there. Um, he has been organic since 1990. Um, certification was finally uh, done in 2010, and he is really focused in on Cabernet Franc. That's what Samir Champagne is all about. It is a little region in the Loire, kind of like central, and I kind of break Cabernet Franc into, I mean, everybody, most people do, into like a handful of categories. So you have in Loire Valley, you have Chinon, which I think is probably widely considered the most famous. Um, you have Saumur Champagne, and then you have Bourgueil. Um, For me, Bourgueil is the most rustic. It tends to be um, very like slaty mineral. There's a little bit of lots of herbaceousness to it. 
Um, they're really fresh, great chill. There's some incredible producers there. Chinon is obviously considered like the really great wine. That's what most people are looking for. I, I find that there's a little more power and structure in Chinon. And then in Sommier Champagne, there, there's a, a grace and elegance that really draws me in personally um, when it comes to Cabernet Franc from the Loire Valley or from anywhere, really. I mean, this is this is the region that if I had to choose a Cabernet Franc to drink, it would be from Sommier Champagne. I just think that the texture and the characteristics are beautiful. So again, I digress. I'm rambling this week. I hope you all don't mind. Um, on the nose, Cab Franc is notorious for being very subdued. It's a little bit of herbaceousness, a little bit of like kind of raspberry cassis. You get those Cabernet characteristics, but it's not explosive or like jumping out of the glass necessarily. This is a wine I love with a little bit of chill on it, which this actually has, which I'm grateful for. Mm. I mean, the palate, upon entry, it is just pure silk. There's great little soft tannins on the back end. Again, more of that kind of cassis, raspberry. We're not talking dark, rich fruits. We're, we're talking very delicate, fresh fruits. Um, you've got like a slaty minerality, and it just it feels like velvet, which to me... The texture of a wine is something that I enjoy thoroughly. I know that's not what everybody's looking for, but when I am when I drink wines, the texture tells me so much because it's gonna tell you how it plays with food and all these other things. So the texture of this wine is gorgeous. Definitely beautiful color, could use maybe even a little more of a chill. I mean, it's got a good chill on it. Um, but this is a wine that Again, you have some peppery, herbaceous characteristics going on. You've got a little bit of that red fruit. You've got good acidity, some nice tannins. This is like, have the smash burger when you come in with this wine. Like the smash burger in a glass or a bottle of this wine is going to be so perfect. You will be so happy. Trust me. So if you're a fan of the smash burger, order that. And when you have this flight, save this wine for when the smash burger comes out because you will be a very happy human being. So... Wow, that's gorgeous. All right, we're going to wrap up because these are fun and we're going to keep it short and sweet this week. So again, Loire Valley, loving it. It's great. The Britier, because I'm not even going to try and say the whole name. Curate de Silex, Cremant de Loire Rosé. Rolling over to a little Puy Fumé from Complice de Loire. Their Terre de Coyotes. Again, Coyotes is that classic local mixture of clay and limestone. And just finishing on... Le Petit Saint Vincent, their Saumur Champagne, what we'll call their kind of intro, you know, basic level AOC wine. So good. Please come out, support all of your local businesses, support restaurants, get some flights here at Second Glass, grab some bites, have a good time, be safe, and I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.